You guys, I cannot tell you how excited. I've just been basically talking to Rob. I've been fangirling and I told him he's my spirit animal. I almost think to a point you're like who I wish my son will maybe grow up to be. Like, I wish I could drop my son off with you. He's 18. And I'd be like, look, I know this guy's going to say some really inappropriate things, but I am a big fan of men helping men transition into who they need to become. And we've really lost that in our culture. So I'm a huge fan. Everybody's watching this. You're inside my course. And this is Rob. Now, I've always just called him the grounded athlete. I always call you that because that's your handle on Instagram. And I've been following you there and you're brilliant. And I didn't even, I'm like, what's his name? <laughs> I'm like, I don't even know what his name is. It's Rob. I'm like, oh, I'm like, I have grounded athlete better. So you guys, brilliant. I can't wait to hear what he's going to say. He's just written a book. He's sent me early PDF. I've been looking at it, enjoying it. It's broken in these four parts. I haven't gotten to the application part where you get into practical stuff. So I'm super excited. I want us to share some of that, but I want you to tell them a little bit about how you would describe yourself. Cause I told you, I think he has one of the most in interesting handles on Instagram. It, one of the most interesting accounts for me to follow. He was like such a Renaissance man, right? He's a 12 time American, all American athlete. He's, you know, a Lakota Native American. He's got this spiritual thing, but he's this bro science dude that knows stuff. I'm like, how do you know all this physics at such a young age? So I'm going to let him talk about where you came from, why you did this. And then we're going to get into this. I would love it because it's going to go for this course called Serenity Science that I teach that has been mm, predominantly women, right? So five or 600, maybe 700 women have taken this. And Rob, my audience, shockingly, I attract so many 60 and 70 year old women come into my courses and are making these radical changes in lifestyle, going carnivore, eating meat again, grounding, using red lights. They want to know the physics of things. They want to understand consciousness. And they've hit that point in their lives where they're like, fuck these doctors. They've been gaslit for decades, told that they're crazy and, you know, and everything, well, you're just getting older. Why don't we just put you on an antidepressant? This can't be right. So they come to me and I think they like that I'm very forthright. I'm very blunt. I say things they wish they could say in a way. I would never have expected the 60 and 70 year old women to be such fans of my courses and so loyal in my community with me. They're the ones that have made me make more courses. Oh, okay. They're like, well, what's after this? I'm like, I don't know. You guys want another one? They're like, yeah. I'm like, what do you want to learn? And I just kept going and kept going. So this course was built to help women never be gaslit at a doctor's office again and show them all this behind the scenes stuff, like electromagnetic therapies, how to use the earth, how to use light, how to use sound. I'm was just a city girl from Detroit. I, I don't have some deep connections to the earth other than my ancestral connections that have been disconnected that I'm trying to find my way back to the earth, to mother calling me. I'm like them, so I'm teaching them like, okay, I do get some younger, but really it's more 40, 50, 60, 70 year old women. I'm trying to get some younger doctors to start taking my colleagues who have no idea and understand the brain and brain waves and electrons and how the earth is in training us. I'm like, you guys, and come take this course and it'll teach you that you're missing the foundation of your patient's fundamental health. You're over supplementing them or you're over drugging them or whatever, and you're missing these other nutrients. So there's the foundation of who you're going to be talking to. Then from there, you are a master at this conversation of the earth and from the electrical and spiritual ways. And you're just a practical guy that also runs. I just tell them who you are. I just adore you. Uh, first of all, thank you. Th thank you for the kind words, especially about your son. That means a lot. I can be very inflammatory, but I try and be, for the most part, a net positive <laughs> influence on the world. And it's amazing that you have such a powerful influence on these women. They clearly hold you in, in a very high regard and in, in improving their lives. 
which is awesome. But yeah, going back to what you initially said, it's hard to classify where I'm at on the spectrum with all of these things. But yeah, so I grew up on a reservation in Rosebud, South Dakota. So I've always been in that earth centric kind of culture. And my elders, mom, my grandpa, who is chief, they always had these sayings for me, these teachings for me, you know, stay close to the earth, it's healing, it's sacred. And you'll find that in a lot of native cultures throughout the country. But it, it came full circle for me because as I was a part of all these traditions, these cultures, Sundance, these sweat lodges, I was always wondering why everybody was barefoot. Just like we hardly ever wore shoes, maybe moccasins every once in a while. But 20 years later, I went to school. I, I went to undergrad. I went to graduate school. I studied physics. I can look back and, and see what was going on there. It was an electrical connection which is a biophysical process, but it was also spiritual too. I was always interested in what was going on exactly, why why my family, why my mom could dance for days and days to these songs and, and not get tired. And she was grounding. Grounding was a big part of that. And so how I came to grounding besides that part was from an athlete. You mentioned the athlete side of things. Running track, I was basically looking for ways to improve my performance, recovery, all those different aspects. And one day I was driving home from a session and I heard this podcast with Clint Ober. He was talking about grounding or some people call it earthing, whatever you want to call it. I was really skeptical at first, as most people are when they first hear about grounding or earthing. I was just like, ah, I don't know. It, you being barefoot on the earth, it's going to cause all these different changes. I, I don't know about that, but I'm willing to try. It. I'm willing to try it. So I started implementing it in my life. I started sleeping grounding, sleeping grounded on a grounding sheet. I started grounding on my lunch breaks when I had a full-time job, spending like 30, 40 minutes doing that. In between my reps, when I was doing my tra track workouts, I'd take my spikes off and I'd be grounded during those recovery periods. And I noticed immediately, I'm sleeping so much better. I'm recovering so much better. My times and practice are, I feel like I'm not exerting myself as much in these workouts. From there, I was hooked. And from that point on, I realized how beneficial grounding is beyond that performance and recovery side of things. From there, I became hooked and I was just like, more people need to know about this. The fact that people don't really know about this practice that's free and is so beneficial for their health was kind of heartbreaking to me. So I was like, I'm going to start teaching people about this. And how I really got started, I was making these long format videos for people like 15, 20 minute videos, basically breaking down what grounding was doing for their body. I've been doing that for the last five years now. So that's essentially how I got on this path that I'm on. Eventually we got to the book and, and different types of footwear that you can wear. This whole message that I've, I've been preaching is ultimately free. I don't want to sell any, anybody anything, but this is a 100% free practice that everybody can, can see benefit from. But yeah, that's how I got on this path. Yeah. There are many things that go into it. My culture goes into it. My spirituality goes into it. My athletics goes into it. My educational background goes into it, but it's, it's all over the place, like you said. When did it start? When did you make the connection? So it's interesting to hear you grew up a certain way, but then you went off into the college bus. Again, I raised my son a certain way and now he's gone off into school. And sometimes he acts like, did you forget everything I taught you? <laughs> because he's been so programmed in that culture already in high school. Wow, that's not what I want you to think. But I get you got to come into yourself. So when you listened to Clint, you listened to that podcast. It's interesting that even you were like, I don't know if I believe this. When you had so much history and mm -hmm. and education but nobody probably weren't saying this is grounding this is yeah. what we're doing when did you make that connection of that's what my mother was doing that's mm -hmm. when she oh my gosh because i know when this synthesis of information happens inside and something must have happened to make that light bulb of uh, you really go on for you yeah i de i definitely saw it more so from a spiritual perspective that was our people being connected to creator that was one of the ways that you established that connection just being close to the earth i didn't see it from that biophysical side of things and really that introduced the biophysical side of things to me when i heard that podcast and yes i was very skeptical i had done my research on it and and still today there's not a ton of research on it 
I have my own reasoning as to why that is. But yeah, I didn't see it from that biophysical perspective. I saw it more from the cultural perspective. And it's a really cool thing when the two combine, you got spiritual and you've got actual like a lot of physics going on. But it wasn't until I started implementing it and really digging a little deeper, the two things meshed for me. And then on top of that, there's a lot of my spirituality in, in preaching this practice. Ultimately, I believe that God created this planet to be electrical. He created our bodies to be in constant contact with these electrical properties of the earth. And so I genuinely believe I'm returning God's people to this planet and the separation, the insulation from those electrical properties is leading a lot of people to experience all these ailments, all of this disease. It was Hippocrates who said that illness is the result of small daily sins against nature. And we have essentially sinned against nature by disconnecting ourselves from the earth. Love it. Love it. So <clears throat> this is the same type of stuff that I teach and I do merge the physics and explain spirituality to them. And we go all kinds of places with the pineal gland and crystals and esoteric stuff. But I'm like, no, no, but it's real. And my wake up to the real importance of nature back again was doing neurofeedback. I'm board certified in neurofeedback, right? So I'm measuring people's I'm using EEGs and I'm using their brain waves back, you know, I'm recording, looking at electrical activity, right? So I'm measuring electricity, explaining it. And I remember as I'm learning this, I'm thinking, I had no idea what AC and DC current was. And I didn't want to hurts from a schmertz. I'm like, I can't believe I have to know this stuff now. But explaining 7.83 hertz and alpha and theta and how I wanted to cross over and I'm hooking you brain into the Schumann resonance like the earth and I'm going to put you in your unconscious in a hypnagogic state so I can clear out trauma as I've said the same thing over and over to patients one moment when I just said it I was like what did I just say what am I saying I'm trying to entrain your brain to go into wait what like I'm missing the point the earth is right there and the entrainment, you know, the frequency following response of the earth. And I finally was really able to, then I started going down that path more. And I have to explain the only reason you're in my office and I'm using all this technology is because if I've disconnected from nature, you've become, I know it's ironic that I'm using technology to undo the damage of technology, but that's what we're doing. <laughs> you know what I mean? As I sit here and I have my little earthing on the floor that I'm like, I can't be outside right now because it's loud. And it's like teaching people this and we all have to come to it at some point. And I'm like, I'm not some crunchy granola person. I don't want to sleep on the ground. I don't want the bugs on me. I like air conditioning. So I understand you, mama. We still need to start going back to it. And so that's the balance I'm in. It's like, how am I teaching people who have their nine to five jobs or have the four kids and have to cook and run here and be in a minivan and go to softball practice and baseball and soccer? How do I get her to go outside? How do I get her to be in the sun? How do I get her to understand charge and how that's the foundation of health? And so to me, you're an electromagnetic being of light. And that is we, we think medicine taught us it's chemistry. I'm like, no, it's not. It's starting here and life force is electricity. So thinking of like, you're explaining this to your mother <laughs> or not your mother, I don't know, like your mother's white friend, not on the reservation. How, how, because I haven't gone into the practical stuff. You guys, he breaks this book. We got a new book and it's going to be out. So I'm going to make sure in the description and everywhere I have the link to your book. You guys, I have the early version. It's beautiful with art. I love that you like beauty as well. Like art. I was like, what's happening with this city, Voltopolis? You know, like, I'm like, oh my gosh, you've got this little story, but it's with science and it's so easy to understand. You've broken it down into the earth and the body, earth and water, and then the way to do things. So maybe just take us a little bit to the story arc of the book and why you wrote it the way you wrote it. Yeah. And then from there, you're gonna be teaching them about charge and the different things, how the planet is, how their body is, water plays into this. And we can leave them with some couple things to do. And like you said, it is free. However, a lot of people have the J-O-B and they have the schedule and the calendar that they're slaves to. And they're like, I asked them to go outside for 15 minutes a day, Rob, and that's hard for some people. Mm -hmm. Hence why we have these 
inside devices. Hence why we have your grounding shoes. We have ways, how can we bring the outside into your house and how when you're out, since you can't be barefoot to walk around, maybe you make an investment in a certain type of shoe. So why don't we start talking about the book maybe and what you've put in, in into that? Yeah. Book and then applications. That sounds like yeah. a good, sounds like a good plan. Yeah. The book's called Earth and Water, a short story of, of life's matrix. And it's been a project of mine for the past five years. How it came about was when I was trying to understand everything about grounding and really break it down to its fundamentals. I had essentially created this Google Doc, this big drive of lectures, videos, books. And that was essentially how I pieced everything together. I was like, I can create something out of this for other people to use. So that's really how Earth and Water came about from this gigantic Google Drive, Google Doc of all these different articles from PubMed and all these different things that are all stored on this Google Drive. I just organized it and I created a story out of it. And the book is split up into four different parts. You have part one, earth introduction, part two, earth and body, part three, earth and water, and part four, earth application. So the reason I set it up that way is to really, in the beginning, get people acquainted with the basic physics of what's going on when you're grounding the body. From there, you can progress to how grounding is affecting these different physiological processes in your body. And then from there, we get a little bit more esoteric. We, cut, we talk about the water in your body and how grounding is, has a, a big influence on the water in your body. Then part four, we get to the application part, how you can implement this in your life, the easiest way to implement it in your life and hopeful future applications of, of this practice. But it's a good mix of your textbook style, your science textbook. You get to learn everything you want to know about grounding, how it's affecting your heart, how it's affecting your brain. What's going on exactly? As soon as you establish that electrical connection with the earth, then from there, you also have a story going on throughout the book. As you pointed out there, this Voltopolis city, um, I I have this obsession with pixel art and cyberpunk. So <laughs> I like this whole world. The book is filled with it. There's so many illustrations in there. It's this world that I created for this story of grounding to unfold in. And so at the same time, while you're taking in all this information about grounding, you're also having this story unfold with this character called Earth Poppy. And yeah. it's scary. It's a scary story. I'm glad you said that because yeah. as I started, I was like, this is a little bit like post-apocalyptic. I yeah. don't know what's going on here. <laughs> you know, I was like, this yeah. is, is 5-9. And... <laughs> <Like, laughs> so... Uh, if, if somebody, when they get the book and they look at the illustrations, they're like, oh, this is like Blade Runner or something like that. So the, this whole world came about from a dream that I had. I didn't watch Blade Runner or anything. And so the dream was, it was me in this huge patch of grass in, in the middle of this massive, colorful neon city. And it was very beautiful. At the same time, it was very eerie. There was no one there. It was just this empty barren, neon, gigantic city. That's what inspired this whole world. I didn't watch Blade Runner until after I, I had created this whole setting for the book. And I was just like, oh, this is actually really similar to that story, that setting. It was really cool. And Blade Runner is now one of my favorite movies because it's so similar to this world. It's a good mix of your nonfiction science book and a eerie, scary fictional story going on throughout the book. It's fun. I lost a lot of nights of sleep putting effort and, and work into this thing. Ultimately, it was worth it because I know the people that read it, it's going to help them. It's something that I think is going to compel a lot of people to implement this practice in their life. That's what kept me up on a lot of nights. I was like, this is going to help so many people once they read it. Side note. So do you think like, do more men follow you than women? Um, yeah. Hard to know? <laughs> like, it's hard to tell, do you know? I've never looked at the numbers, like demographic wise, I don't know how I'd be able to, uh, but I think it's definitely dudes in their 20s to like late 30s. But I also have a lot of women in their 40s. I have a lot of women in their 40s and 50s. I don't know if they follow me because they think I'm attractive or if they actually like the content. It's hard to tell, but... It's all over the place. Started like chopping wood. It'd be like a whole other thing. Have you seen the guy that chops wood? We all watch him. We're like, you see the guy chopping wood? He like, well, has a master's. He's actually a smart guy, but wow. Yeah. But I'm chopping wood. <laughs> it's, all, it's like all yeah. the, but actually I think people are so drawn to nature and I think they are drawn. The women, 
yes, you are attractive, but it's also this, it's you're, you're have this strength and certainty of what you're doing. And I, I'm just going to tell you as an older woman, as I said earlier, in my fifties, you're much younger. I'm so inspired by a certain group of these young men that are very, you're very solid and you're very kind of chivalrous, maybe. It's like you're old school, grown up with this egalitarian way of thinking of things, but yet there's this kind of old fashioned respect and sacredness and way of doing things. And I think you're protectors. I think you don't have a lot of tolerance for I'm not saying this is you. I'm just saying a lot of the guys that I know in this group that I follow and deal with, I'm not into porn and into prostitutes. They're like, I'm not doing that. That's not a man, actually. So they have this old, they're like, no, a strong man is like this. It's a very different, they're more into virtuousness. Like, like, no, we work hard. We provide, we have good bodies. We want to be healthy physically, spiritually, emotionally. The spiritual health is very important to people. I'm I have texts from guys who are like, they have good friends that they're like, can you help me with him? Because he's like a porn addict and I can't tolerate that in my life. I love him, but I won't deal with that type of behavior. So these are like guys in their thirties who are like, mm -mm, this is unhealthy and we won't stand for it anymore. That's not actually what masculinity is. So there's a lot of that around. And I think women in their forties and fifties and stuff are like, oh my God, how refreshing. <laughs> Look, they're back. Uh, you know, we don't want to be thrown around obediently told what to do, but I think women are really missing men who have some physical and mental prowess to them. Yeah. You yeah. certainly do bring that uh, and it's refreshing. I just, it's written. I like that though, because it has this very young masculine feel and good because young guys need to know this. The younger, the better right? Because you have a whole crew that just want to sit around in the in a dark basement playing video games on Pornhub or, or whatever else they're doing, who don't see the sunlight, who don't ground, who are full of God knows how much static electricity and, and discharge. I see their brain maps and it's a mess. They're, they're running way too fast, very inflamed, high beta, can't think well, very low dopamine, so it's an uncomfortable life for them. It makes sense that they're addicted to everything when they don't know how to get out of it. So yeah, it's, you guys who are listening, women, I'm enjoying it. Trust me, it's, it just was a little bit like, oh, this story, I felt I was like a comic book kind of a thing. I was like, what's happening here? I felt I was reading, um, oh, my son reads those books, like the cartoon picture books. I'm not saying it right. A manga, I think. Yeah, manga. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm manga. like, you know, yeah. it's not <laughs> like that, but it felt like that a little bit to me. Did you do the artwork? Yeah, so I use three different software to basically put all this stuff together. Yeah. So. He does everything, you guys. And I told him before, I love his website. Say your website. This is thegroundedathlete.com. Yeah, that? yeah. And if you just Google search The Grounded Athlete, it'll be the first thing that pops up. Yeah, it is so funny and so creative. And that's what we were talking about. He has fun with what he does. And I love that he said, say what you said. You're like, I don't care if you all buy from me. Say what you said about that. Yeah, I think we were talking about uh, how I could sometimes be inflammatory on social media, but really I don't need anybody buying anything from me. It's awesome if you want to buy the book and if you want to buy the sandals and everything, but my personality will always be a big part of what I do. I want people that actually like me and enjoy my presence. Presence. And I want those people supporting me. I don't need every. I don't need everybody buying things from me. That's not what I do. What I do essentially is this free message. You don't have to pay for anything. All you do is take your shoes off. You go outside and you establish this connection with the earth, or you go buy a thirty dollars grounding mat. You don't have to support anything that I do. But it's definitely nice. But uh, yeah, not, that's nice yeah. to have sales on the book. People put a lot of work into stuff, and writing books is not easy, especially when you start bringing in the physics. So, is your master's in what is your master's in? Physics. I went to undergrad and graduate school. Yeah, studied physics. Okay. Wow. Okay. So looking at what you studied in school, right? Because it's yeah. certain I took some physics in school. What was that like translating textbook physics into then looking at the earth and those systems? Was it easy? It made it way easier. <laughs> Electrical engineering is what it comes down to. And having a, a solid foundation in physics allows you to better comprehend this branch of physics, which is electrical engineering, but it's also more on the application side of things. But it definitely allowed me to really break this stuff down a bit more. For me, it was easy to understand. And 
what I essentially try and do is I try and break it down even further for somebody that just, you know, they come to me, they don't know anything about biology or chemistry or physics. And, you know, I try and give that information to them in, in an accessible way. And that's what earth and water is too. So what then do you think is the most, it's probably in the book, but maybe the most surprising thing that you find you yourself or other people about earthing, grounding in the body or the electrical engineering of the body, let's say. Hmm. The most surprising thing, I think to somebody that isn't me, I think it's people that haven't really learned about grounding or earthing, probably all of it. I don't, I don't know if there's anything particularly that's surprising to me. It all makes sense. It all makes sense from a physics perspective. Nothing really stands out where I'm just like, oh, that's absolutely What crazy. physiological process or physiological impact, body impact, would you say that do you think maybe most people go, I had no idea. Um, yeah. What do you mean? Um, I yeah, I, I think so. How I start part two of the book is I something called the big three. And that's essentially all of these benefits that you see improvements in vagal tone and cardiovascular health and um, immune system function. I think these all stem from these three core mechanisms. One is that when you ground, so it, really quickly, what is grounding people out there is it's just establishing electrical connection with the surface of the earth. You can do that by direct contact, just being outside, being barefoot on a conductive surface, or you can do it inside with your, your grounding mat there, grounding sheet. There are many different products you can utilize, but what it comes down to is just having that electrical connection to the earth. Um, but so what's going to happen when you ground this big three, number one is that the density of negative charge is going to increase in your body that contributes to your body's electrical homeostasis, because as you said earlier, your body is electrical. That is your default state. It's your factory settings, if you will, because humans have evolved for most of our time here on earth in direct electrical contact with the surface of the earth. And it's only in the last hundred years that we, we disconnected ourselves from that, from those properties of the earth. So number two is that it's going to attenuate the excessive inflammation, excessive oxidative stress response. And if you really look at what's killing people all around the world, if you try and find the common denominator between what's killing everybody in the world, which is chronic non-communicable disease, cancer, diabetes, neurodegenerative disease, cardiovascular disease, you look for the common denominator amongst these things. And what do you find? You find excessive inflammation, excessive oxidative stress. So what I'm saying is that grounding isn't the one-all be-all cure to disease, but if we can influence this oxidative stress, this excessive oxidative stress side of things, we can by proxy influence this inflammation side of things. And so where grounding comes into the picture is essentially moderating this excessive oxidative stress response in the body. So that's number two. And number three is that charges this water protein matrix battery in your body. That's more of an esoteric side of things, but that's a big part of the grounding process. You're essentially charging up this battery in your body that's charged up by the earth. It's charged up by the sun, light. But yeah, those are the things that I usually start with when I'm describing these benefits to people about grounding. There's a lot that goes on in the body, but it can all be traced back to these kind of mechanisms that are going on. Yeah. And we cover them a lot in with my patients, with my courses. Everybody always wants to just talk about food, food impact, which I understand because we have to eat a lot. But then they seem to want to forget that we live in this matrix of this electromagnetic field all the time. And there's energy moving. There's invisible <laughs> energy, light, sound, heat, radio waves, microwaves, gamma rays, all moving through us all the time, right? I really have trillions of dollars moving through me right now. I'm sure moving back and forth from Dubai and wherever else, right? Because it's all just code and it's all just frequency, right? Mm -hmm. And they want to forget about like that. And I have to remind them, light is a nutrient. Sound is a nutrient. Everything's about, we're pulling electrons, protons off of things. I'm like, oh, so I take it down to that. So they learn these little basic things. Remember that horrible chemistry class you had? <laughs> Remember that? <laughs> Actually matters. And I talk a lot about mitochondria. So they know it enough to be like, oh, like we're not doing the Krebs cycle that they need to understand is 32 ATP and blah, blah, blah. Nobody cares. But let's understand what's going through the inner you know, membrane. It's electrons and why, right? So I think the water thing is actually, I don't think it's esoteric at all. I think it's very physical and very real and needs to be discussed. I think talking about that, like a 
teach them your life force is how much battery is are you a nine volt or are you a two volt like you know where your life force where's your aliveness is based on how charged that battery is and with mental health issues if i can't get the brain to hold the charge i have a problem like i can often fix it but then there's also can't hold it that's where maybe nutrition comes in where i'm like i need enough cholesterol i need enough saturated fats i need these substrates in there you guys but the substrates without the electrical flow light, sound, earth, electrons, what's the point? So the two are important together. So I try to, in this course, I'm like, let's stop talking about the food, you guys. I'm talking about this over here. So I'd love you to talk about that and the water. Let's talk about that. How we are copper top. Neo had it right in the matrix. They were calling it copper top. Yeah, that's what you are. So let's recharge you. And I think death is just when we can't recharge the battery anymore. You know? this electric nutrition side of things, this vitamin G, if you will. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so there's part part three of the book, Earth and Water. Essentially, you have this whole body redox system that's distributed throughout your body. I refer to it as the matrix. And there are people out there that have different definitions of the matrix. My definition of the matrix is this con continuous semiconductive network that's distributed throughout your entire body that consists of these semiconductive proteins along with the coherent water that organizes itself around these proteins um, along with the ground substance that's distributed throughout your body's extracellular matrix and so over time as you're insulated the longer you're insulated these electron stores that so i'm going to talk particularly about this ground substance that's in your extracellular matrix so what is this ground substance? Before we get to that, actually, when you have somebody, like if I look at you, if I'm just somebody that was trying to break you down from a biological standpoint, you're like, this person's made of cells. They're made of mostly cells. They're not made mostly of cells. It's actually the space in between cells that they're mostly made of. That's extracellular matrix. So that's a mixture of ground substance, collagen fibers, and a few other different components. But ground substance is a big part of that. And what ground substance is, is this collection of glycosaminoglycans, proteoglycans that are heavily sulfated. They trap a lot of water and they're also negatively charged. So what you have is essentially these storage sites of negative electrical charge that are distributed throughout your body. When these become depleted, the longer you're insulated, your body can't pull from this whole body redox system and utilize it for what have you, energy production in the mitochondria, oxidative stress resolution by donating electrons to these reactive oxygen species, reactive nitrogen species, free radicals. And what do free radicals want? They want electrons. They want electrons to stabilize themselves. That's how antioxidants work. And so grounding really is your number one most efficacious source of antioxidant. We can talk about that if you want, but that's what this battery is, is this semiconductive whole body redox system. And it's a battery. And what do batteries need? Batteries need to be charged up. How do you charge this battery up? What's really popular right now, what everybody talks about is light and sunlight. And where I've been trying to squeeze things in is with the grounding side of things. Grounding is also a very important part of that. And so you're essentially charging this body battery by being outside, getting direct sunlight and being in electrical contact with the surface of the earth. Those are two big parts of how these electron stores in your body get charged up. But to me, that's how I define this matrix, this battery in your body. And there are various different little intricate components of that, but that is the gist of what this system is. And you're looking at it from all over, like everywhere that extra, extracellular matrix, as well as they, like, I, I think of specific systems like glycocalyx. Mm -hmm. To me, that was always how I understood what the glycocalyx is, is that's the number one grounding system of the body. Yeah. But maybe that's not true. Maybe it's just like what you're calling that whole grounding kind of system, how the fascia kind of is like, well, this is like this whole thing that's bigger than everything we realize. We didn't really give it credit for what it is. And the glycocalyx, which is a net negative charge inside the you know vasculature lining. It's like, wait, that's the grounding system? What? And that's being devastated. And there's so much to this. That's just a fascinating. I think that gelatinous water battery can net negative charge is holding so much capacity. And it's something no one's taught about that. I did not learn this in grad school. I don't know a single doctor that has taught this in school. Yeah. We all come to it much later, like 
accidentally running into a two by four. What? What did you just say? <laughs> and then we have to go down some rabbit hole of DC current, AC, what is the different voltage? You know what I'm saying? Did you like, you just go, I didn't even know I was going to be looking at this. I don't even under, and I'll tell you every doctor pretty much avoids every healthcare worker. You avoid physics. Everyone's, oh God, you're, you're telling you to push physics off because you don't want to ruin your GPA so you can get into medical school. And it's like, oh, push that off to junior year. That's the thing everybody does because it's going to be your hardest class. It's approached that way. Like barely you don't care about the physics, which is so wrong. Once I took it, I said, I should have been a physics major, not a biology major. This was a major mistake. You know what I mean? Because I saw that's the foundation of it. We've got it wrong. This is so stupid that they make us study all this biology when we should be studying all this physics. You did it the right way, even though you aren't taking care of people in a clinician way, you're doing it a different way. You understand it from a way that the, most of us don't. Okay. I'm just going to tell you that's the reality. And I feel like I've been playing catch up in the last 10 years to go, wow. I missed it because I'm trained to think in terms of a certain way of the nervous system. And even though you're talking electrical conductivity there, you really still don't get it. <laughs> you, know? you don't really get it. So make that practical for somebody. Cause I'm going to tell you the listeners like, okay, so what are they saying with the ground matrix is again? What is that? Yeah. And I heard protein and collagen. So should I take collagen? Mm -hmm. I, I promise you that's what somebody is thinking. Like, how can they get more of that? Is you saying they you just go ground, they're going to get more of it? Yeah, that's essentially what contributes to a healthy matrix is just keeping it charged through sunlight, sunlight and grounding. But what you said earlier, there are many different aspects of this whole matrix system. I try and see it from more of the main constituents of it. For me, that's the direct physical contact, this direct highway of proteins from the nuclear matrix through the cell to the extracellular matrix, which is this direct highway from into the DNA to outside in the extracellular matrix, along with the water that organizes itself around these structures. There are various different components of it, but... No, you don't really need to supplement anything for this. You just need to maintain it. And it's super easy to maintain. <laughs> you go outside, you get some sunlight. And I don't know if you wanted to go this way, but really how I try and teach people about grounding is I usually point out a wall outlet right off the bat because that gives people something like, oh, this actually is a thing and it is. Yeah, utilized. I explain them. Explain uh, it. What happens to the appliances in the house and why we know about this like this. Yeah. Yeah. So if you take a look at a wall next to you, you'll see an outlet. That outlet is composed of the neutral wire, the hot wire, and the ground connection is that bottom little circle hole, the bottom port of, of the wall outlet. Uh, you can Google search it. You'll know exactly where, I don't know if I'm describing it very well, but on the bottom of the outlet. But so what's going on there is that there is a wire that's connected to that part of the outlet to the ground outside to a grounding rod or a grounding plate. And why is that there? That's there because in the case of a ground fall, a uh, short circuit, if there's lightning that strikes your home, your building, that essentially gives that, that stray current, that excessive current, a place to go into the ground. It dissipates it. So it's the same process with your body. You have this buildup of charge on your body, the static electricity, this uh, imbalance in your body's electrical homeostasis. And what grounding is doing is it's dissipating that excess of electrical charge that's built up on your body. And it's letting it go into the earth because the earth is negatively charged. It's maintained by various different atmospheric cosmological phenomena. But that is what the earth is, is it's this net negative surface charge. And when you connect to that, so this whole grounding practice is well known. It's well established in the electrical industry. It's just the biological side of it that's not very well known yet. But this is an actual process that people utilize to not only keep people safe, but to keep equipment working correctly, to keep it from being damaged in the case of short circuit or ground fault. Uh, this is very much a well-established practice in, in the electrical industry. 
Yeah, when we started having refrigerators and things like that, you guys, they were blowing up basically and realized, <laughs> oh, we have a problem. Yeah. And then they're like, well, what, what's the solution? The earth, we're going to, it's building up static. It's basically your refrigerator is getting stressed out with too much. And this is how we feel. We get the same way and we blow out. It blows out your nervous system, your relationships. You might come off the handle a little bit more. It's very different. That's something I notice that people talk about is, again, their sense of peace, calmness, relaxation. I just feel so much better. And like their res ability to handle the stress in their life, their resilience factor just goes up so much because I have a cup, right? You can only handle so much cup, stress, and it's going to overflow. So as the, the real electrical energy, static builds up, it just keeps coming. And so the way to do it is to go out, be barefoot, use ground mats, grounding sheets, different ways. Let's talk about some of the practical stuff. And I could, we keep saying barefoot. There are exceptions to this and ways to do it. And people ask, does it count if you're on cement? Does it have to be in the dirt? What about sand? What about water? What about a pond? What about wool? What about leather? What about blah, blah, blah? You're always looking. And then always this question. Yeah. How long uh, do I have to do it? So I'm going to tell you, everybody, okay, can we stop going for the minimal effort involved? But they always mm -hmm. want to know these things. So why don't you roll it out? This is some of the practical stuff and what matters and what doesn't matter. Yeah. So this is what you'll find in, in part four of the book, Earth Application. Those are the two most common questions I have gotten in the last five years. Am I grounded here or how long do I need to ground, aka how little can I get away with? Right, right. Uh, always. <laughs> yeah. But what grounding comes down to is essentially electrical conductors and insulators. So what an electrical conductor is, is it's a material that holds on to its electrons very loosely. So electrons can pass through it. Electrical energy can pass through it. And insulators are the opposite. They hold on to their electrons really tight. Electrical energy can't pass through it. So what it comes down to when knowing if you're grounded or not, if I'm grounded in this particular setting on this particular surface, is what that surface is made of. Is that surface made of a conductor or is it made of an insulator? Let's take two examples. We have cement on one side, we have asphalt on the other side. These are the really common ones I get in my grounded in, in these settings. So if we look at what cement is made of, it's mostly mineral and water. It's conductive, especially if you get it wet, it's conductive. On the other side, we have asphalt. What is asphalt? It's mainly this petroleum-based polymer. It's more synthetic. So that makes it more insulating. The, the cool thing about this is that it's just an easy Google search away. What am I standing on? Concrete. Let me look up what concrete's made of. Oh, is it electrical conductor? Yeah, it is. Oh, I'm grounded here. It's, it's that easy. Again, you can do it inside with these conductive mats and these conductive sheets, but just some common conductive surfaces, soil, grass, sand that's close to water, not too far away from the water because really dry surfaces, they hold a lot of air. Air is very insulating. But soil, grass, concrete, um, these are all very grounding surfaces. Insulating surfaces, wood, glass, usually synthetic stuff, like man-made stuff. Wood, glass, asphalt, really dry surfaces. Those are very insulating. If you can identify if what you're standing on is an electrical conductor or an insulator, you'll know whether you're grounded or not. You can also use these conductive like a mat that you have, which is made of these conductive fibers, which connects to that grounding port that we had talked about earlier, which is connected to the ground outside. If you're going to be using those products, I always tell people you should test them. There's two things that you can get to test these products, and they're not very expensive at all. One's an outlet checker, and the other's a multimeter. So you plug the outlet checker into the wall. It's got this series of lights on it. Those lights will pop up on there, and that'll essentially will tell you if your building's electrical system is properly grounded. From there, step one, done. Uh, you plug in your grounding mat, and then you use your multimeter to check your body voltage. When you touch that grounding product, that grounding sheet, that grounding mat, you should see a body voltage drop on that multimeter. That tells you that the product is working. Um, so those are some pretty common ways to ground, and it so seems kind of hard. Let's talk about socks and shoes and stuff. Yeah. So there's, there's a lot, I'm in, in the South, and some people are like, it's like parasites and you let your kid go barefoot i'm like oh my yes yeah. i do <laughs> always have and aren't you worried about stuff no i'm not go on the creek too so again we have a 
highly germaphobic society and it's gotten nothing but worse. Yeah. So people might be like, I don't know how I feel about that. What if I step on something and it hurts my toes and like older people sometimes are like, look, I'm diabetic. I don't want to have an injury. So what about socks, shoes, yeah. say something about that for people. Yeah. Yeah, there are ways that make grounding more convenient, like footwear, like the grounding mats. But the grounding footwear essentially is conductive footwear. It allows you to ground. You can test them with the multimeter. I have sandals that you can wear. I have boots. I have sneakers. How all my footwear works is through a copper plate, copper rivet into the actual shoe. There are versions of grounding footwear that use kind of a carbon-based sole. I don't like the carbon-based soles as much because there are more variables uh, in play when you're wearing those, everything has to work correctly for them to work and ground you. Uh, the copper in the shoe is a kind of a surefire way that it's going to ground you. If you're uh, wearing just... socks, will it work? Yes. So most people, even though they say they might not sweat, you are sweating at a very minuscule level. That's going to add to the conductivity of those, of the sock that you're wearing. It's going to seep into the sock. That's going to help with the electrical conductivity it might take a little bit longer for that conductivity to be sufficient enough if you're wearing more synthetic clothing like the spandex socks, but cotton socks are going to be the best natural fibers. Those are more conductive. Leather works just fine. Leather is what shoes were made of for a really, really long time. And, and those are conductive and those grounded a lot of people. We only really introduced rubber sole shoes in the last hundred years, but the more natural fabrics you can wear, the better, and not just socks, but just in general, you want to be wearing more, more organic cotton, wool, and all these different things. It's those synthetic materials that make things a little bit more difficult. They seep into your skin, they get into yeah, your body. That's so. important, you guys. Yeah. Like, this is, I think we've all been a little mind blown to find out those synthetic things are plastic. Let's be real clear. And they're going into our bodies, disrupting our hormones or endocrine disrupting chemicals. And we're finding microplastics in us because of the under spandex, nylon. like this was a mind blowing concept to be like, wait a minute, the yoga pants are going up in my crotch. Yes, honey. So I've changed all my stuff and bought organic cotton. I want my underwear to be a certain way. I'm like, oh no, I, my son wears merino wool underwear. My ex-husband was mad at me for like $35. I said, look, it's worth every penny. I'm keeping that everything on him. I don't care because it matters. Like that's his life force genitalia this is that you got, we're really poisoning ourselves and that goes in when you wash all those clothes they go into the water supply microplastics like it's a much bigger issue and it's ruined so it's ruining you many ways in addition to the electrical conductivity you have your ability to discharge electron grab electrons and discharge protons on static charge so that's a really big point i want to make sure you just didn't like skirt over yeah. it too yeah. fast yeah yeah. The electrical side of things, as far as wearing them in like conductive footwear and stuff is the least of our worries when it comes to <laughs> yeah. like synthetic materials. But yeah. And the, the second question you had asked, how long can I ground? I, I have to give you the most annoying answer I could possibly give. It depends. It depends on how long you've been insulated your whole life. It, de it depends on if you're dealing with certain ailments, what kind of inflammatory state you find yourself in ideally 24 7 365 that's how your body is meant to thrive in constant electrical contact with the earth but so there's this concept it's called inflammatory preparedness that's essentially how going back to the matrix a little bit it's how saturated your body is with free electrons and that when you do run into something it your body is better able to manage it some kind of chronic condition your body is able to pull from these electron stores in your body because your body is in a state of high inflammatory preparedness. Dr. James Oshman talks about this a lot and he's been a big inspiration for me in a lot of my writing. But yeah, it, it really depends. Something is better than nothing. I don't have an exact time frame for people. Start with five minutes a day, build from there. And the easiest way to do this is to get a grounding mat or a grounding sheet, test it, put it on your bed. That's seven, eight hours right there. Very easy, done, over with. You don't have to think about it. Stick a grounding mat underneath your computer. Use it as a mouse pad. You can do it while you're working. Very easy way right there. But also get some time outside barefoot in some sunlight. That's a big part of the whole grounding process too and why people feel better is they're just out in nature. They're not being polluted by all of this non-native electromagnetic interference. 
but it's a lot more accessible and it's a lot more easy than people think. A few very cheap investments will will take you a long way as far as this cold grounding thing goes. If you were to average all of these studies on grounding, you might ranges from instantaneous effects in the body to they're grounding a whole for a whole night of sleep and then they're seeing these benefits, but it'd probably be like two or three hours or something like that. But really the more the better, but something is better than nothing. And I think that's probably the most obvious answer I can give. I love it. Yeah, that's it, it's that's the same kind of answer. I'm like, you guys, it's supposed to be again 24 seven. So anything less than that, you're de- depriving yourself. So you go from there. What you can figure out how to do, and sometimes it's just you know sitting is such a hard thing on the system. So I'm like, if you can't set a clock every hour at least, you need to get up and move some lymphatic system. If you can go outside for five minutes, walk around your grass barefoot, do a little bit of shaking out, a little qigong, what a difference you're going to feel. You will not be as fatigued. It's extraordinary what people say. They're like, I can't believe this simple thing. Morning sunlight, barefoot. It's probably they're spending 20 minutes in a day. There's not even that much, but I think even breaking it up often at times is if, if you got 20 minutes, I'd rather five minutes be spread around because it helps builds up so much. I have a blanket on my couch. It's grounded. It's like all over the place. Cause I had my whole office like this. So I had just, so everything was grounded. People would come and they had no idea what was happening, rugs and all the stuff. So <laughs> I'm going to ask you one last question because yeah. This is a personal question and I haven't been able to figure out the answer. I tell them like, I don't know. There's a few of us that are like this and I've tested it. I've done all that testing to know. So I have grounding sheets and I can't sleep on them. They get me very activated. And so I don't sleep. And I had two other people that are like that. And I'm like, you have that too? And they were very fit. There were two, the other two were men very fit guys and they're like girl that kept me up all night I, I can't keep I keep trying it but I feel like I'm buzzing I'm like that's how I feel so what's that all about do you have an answer like why some of us are like this or is it the product like I've tested I can't figure out you know what I mean yeah what, what happens with me grounding is such a subjective thing for a lot of people how it's going to affect one person isn't necessarily how it's going to affect another so it and you've tested your products Yeah. Yeah. And they doesn't do that to me except at night. Yeah. There's so many factors into that too. I'd have to look like, what's your electromagnetic environment like? What's your non-native electromagnetic environment like? Because that's going to be a big part of that too. But I'd say for me, what I've heard mostly is that people dream a lot more vividly when they're sleeping grounded. I haven't heard of people ever mentioning to me that they can't sleep when they're using a grounding mat or just a grounding sheet. It's just me and these two guys that I know. Yeah. And we all went through it. We all go, maybe we have dirty electricity in this house. Maybe there's this, maybe there's that. And I could never, the ports test and the things to everything tested. So I don't know what it is about that. So it's made me in this house. I've actually never, I, I've been afraid to try it. So I haven't yeah. stalled up, but my son would sleep dramatically better. So I don't know, it's very mm. interesting, but he's at a teenage age. He doesn't want to sleep on that sheet. I'm like, why are you not sleeping on this thing anymore? Yeah. Like, yeah. On a regular sheet. Again, that's why yeah. I would <laughs> give them off to you for a hot yeah. minute. It's such a subjective thing because for example, like when you're looking at people, when you're trying to assess like what's going on with the nervous system, when you're grounding, if somebody's in this hyper sympathetic state, or if somebody's in this hyper parasympathetic state, grounding is going to affect both of those people differently. It's just going to pull them more towards the middle. But yeah, it's such a subjective thing. That's why it's so difficult to say this is going to affect you a certain way with grounding. And just yeah. really, I, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. I, 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 I have a suspicion of how it is. I can't do sensory deprivation tanks at night either. And when I kept telling them I'd be up all night, I used to go after work and I came in, I'm like, dude, this, I would think I'm going home, going to bed and I'm up all night, like ready. To, I'm like, so full of so much, like vibrant, full of energy. And the guy goes, oh, you're one of the 10%. I said, what? And he goes, I'm that too. He goes, we find that some people are basically so stressed out. The nervous system is under so much tension that you get so relaxed and it freed up so much energy off of you. Basically, we took like a hundred pounds off of you, but you didn't even, you were so tired. You didn't even know you were that tired. So 
I have to do sensory deprivation tanks in the morning. Yeah. And it frees me up to be like an animal that day. I have so much energy. So I suspect it's like that, that my nervous system is actually more tense than I'm aware of inner tension. Mm -hmm. And this is dropping that. And so it energizes me. Yeah. Like, I'm like, oh, I'm free to do a bunch of stuff now. So it's, it's interesting. I do most of it during the day and I don't do it at night. Very different than when I'm outside, though. If I'm camping or something, that's a completely different situation, right? Because I think it is more natural and who knows what the situation is, but I sleep and I sleep well. So that's my suspicion. I don't know if there was another. That yeah. makes sense. It makes sense yeah, to me. That's what so. I think. I'm just that high, strong or whatever. <laughs> You're built different. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. My tension is tight. All right. So, Rob, tell them drop the handles, the websites, the whatever they need to do. And I'm assuming the book will be there. Just tell them how to get everything and get a hold of you, you guys. He does, let me say this, buy his book, buy his shoes. I just found out he has more than sandals. I've been looking at the sandals and I'm like, wait, you have all these other things? I didn't know this. So, and I've been trying, and, and it's a long story, you guys. I don't even own them yet because he and I were back and forth. And I'm like, oh my God, how do I? Because he custom makes these sandals. I'm like, wait, you're going to make it based on my shoe, my measurements and all the stuff? He's like, yeah. I'm like, what? And I just have poor follow-up. But Bob, I am begging you after this. I must have some shoes and I can't wait to buy the book. And please tell everybody where to find all your stuff because he's fantastic. Yeah. So I always try and direct people to the website first thing. The website is thegroundedathletellc.com, or if you Google search The Grounded Athlete, it'll be the first thing that pops up. What you're going to find on that website is all the research associated with grounding. Uh, you'll find all my videos, all my podcasts. You'll find links to the book, which will take you to Barnes & Noble. You can buy the book from Barnes & Noble. You can get the ebook on Instagram. It's The Grounded Athlete. Um, I have another page, Olympus Earthwear, on The Grounded Athlete. The website for the footwear is olympusearthwear.com. You can get the sandals on there. You can get the boots on there. You can get the sneakers on there. But, and then Twitter, Earth Poppy is my handle. That's my alias, but I'm pretty active on there. If you guys ever have questions or anything, or if you just want to connect, I'm pretty good with my emails. I'm pretty good with my DMs. Reach out to me if you have any questions about anything, or if you need help with trying to find a certain, the right sizing or where to get the book, I'm, I'm, I'll do my best to, to help out there. So. Oh man. Yeah. Thank you. So much. Well, I'll make sure it's all in the notes the right way. Make it easy for you guys, but I'm going to get back on your website. I haven't really been there for a hot minute. I, you guys, I've used his website. I've shown web developers his site and been like, this is so good. Can you make mine more fun? And then he does it all himself. So I commend you for your dedication to the earth honestly, and then opening up yourself and letting all that creativity flow through you and your commitment to playing and having some fun with it and taking a serious topic that's profound, but having fun with it and being light about it and bringing joy to yourself and the people around you and saying, I'm not going to not be myself to like it. You get great. If you don't, that's okay as well. And I think we need more of that type of courage than everybody who's trying to bend themselves to fit into a box for everybody. I say it a lot. I'm not for everybody. I'm not, I'm, if I'm not, that's fine. Go on. And we get coached a lot in business to change, to soften up, or to go into, a, if you just did this, more people would like you. I don't really care if people like me. Like maybe everybody doesn't have to. Maybe doesn't. So I commend that because you are running a business and Profit does matter. We do need money to survive, but you've put a hell of a lot of work into it and it's fun and playful. And I can't wait to get some of your shoes. I had no idea you had some of those other things. I thought it was just sandals. So I'm going to get back on there <laughs> and do a little bit of shopping and I can't look forward to it. Dr. Rimka, it's been awesome. I always appreciate the opportunity that people give me to talk some grounding. And this is a message that's very near and dear to my heart. It's always fun. I, I hope that the passion that I have is infectious and, and it rubs off on people because it is something that I really care about. And it's something that I can put a lot of myself into, a lot of my personality. And it's very fun for me. So uh, thank you. Thank you for the very opportunity. Welcome. It's a clear calling. I think that's what's so honestly beautiful about you when anybody is doing what they're clearly supposed to be doing I think people are just drawn to that to look at it like how pretty that is wow 
and even if you don't even have to agree with it, but you know, that's what they were born to do. And wow, I, I just love seeing that. So I can't wait to see where you're going to be in five to 10 years with this because you've gotten a hell of a jump start. Because some people at 60 still don't know what they're supposed to do. So I'm happy for you. So Thank thanks. You. See you. Have a good one. All right. Peace. Yep.